Dan invited Hannah over for dinner. But you don't cook. Ugh, I, I know I'm not the best cook, okay? <laughs> but I promise it'll be good. I mean, it'll be casual. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. For more than three years, their romance was a hurdleless stroll with the exception of their relative's constant when nagging. Are you, when are you two getting married? Hannah had recently run out of clever responses to the question. Hey, when are you two getting married? She despised this trite and pejorative inquiry, since it could never be answered without her devotion being called into question. To her, the notion of staying unwed was mutual, bounded by their secret handshakes in the bedroom. But then, Dan invited her over for dinner. He had never invited anyone over for dinner before. Hello? Not even Hannah. And so Hannah headed for Dan's apartment. A roundabout journey occupied more than 40 minutes. Just enough time for her to contemplate life's bigger questions. Should I keep my ring on for showers and baths? Do I have to make amends with frenemies before inviting them to the reception? Am I expected to call her my sister-in-law? Do I call her when we run into marital problems? Am I stuck with drinking his dad's home brew, which should at best be described as mildly musty? How many kids do I want before menopause? Do I keep my name? Can I keep my name? What happens if he gets on one knee? Am I obliged to get teary-eyed even if I don't feel like a fluttering waterfall? Hannah arrived early and offered help, but Dan instructed her to find a spot on the couch and read a book. She complied. After all, their relationship was stemmed from giving each other personal space and freedom. Hannah has always been a self-conscious introvert. Her diffidence came from the weekly dinner parties her parents hosted throughout her childhood, in which Hannah was told to keep her mouth shut. Whenever she interfered, her father would force her to drink diet cola. She had learned to stay quiet ever since. After she graduated from high school, she met Dan, an extrovert who would let Hannah give her two cents or a dime when and if she wanted to. <laughs> the first time Dan met Hannah's parents, awkward hugs and handshakes were exchanged with suspicion. But once the parents heard stories of his adventures around the globe, his approval skyrocketed. He provided hours of entertainment and received much love and admiration. But the credit should be attributed to the alcoholic beverages. Back in the apartment, Dan cooked, and Hannah read a book about the history of salt. The text was undoubtedly intriguing, she thought. Yet she couldn't help but to notice the silence. All right, dinner's ready. Actually, I do have something I need to tell you. You know what? I, let's save it for later. Let's just enjoy the meal. You can talk. I'm listening. Thanks. I guess I'm not here to hear you talk. I'm here for the fish. I 
I was at the hospital and uh, the doctor said I have a, uh, it's a word I can't even pronounce, hepo, uh, <clears throat> hepacellular carinoma. Anyway, it's a tumor growing inside my liver. And he said it's cancerous and it might be spreading. I mean, yeah. Already in her head, Hannah was constructing her parting words. She had exactly 284 days to think of a perfect goodbye, but she wasn't counting. It wasn't delicious nor disgusting. It wasn't divine nor gross in taste or in appearance. Should the mushy carrots even be considered food? Who cares? All she saw in front of her was a dying man who invited her over for dinner. <laughs> 